Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having an amazing week so far. I'm still looking at all your requests and seeing what you want me to film. And something that's been surprisingly asked a lot is a halo eye. And I thought that would be a really good idea because it's a technique that you don't have to go crazy with, you can, but it's also one you can use in everyday life because it's just gradient color. And it's quite a nice effect for anyone who wants to brighten the eye a little bit, who wants to open the eye a little bit. Yeah, it's a nice technique to know, basically. So we'll do that today. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Robert. I'm a professional makeup artist here on YouTube and also in real life. And it is my goal to help you become a pro yourself or just someone who's really, really good at makeup. So if that sounds like something you would enjoy, then please consider subscribing to my channel. Okay, let's get into my eyes and let's, I'm going to do one because I'm going to be explaining it as I go. It's going to take forever. Oh my God, I'm so hungry. Oh, you know when you get like sick, hungry, hurt. Okay, I'm fine. Let's zoom in. Hello. Okay, so, so I'm going to try and mention every brush as I go. You know me though, I forget. Um, <laughs> so yeah. So I'm gonna go in first with my MAC Painterly Paint Pot. And I'm just gonna do a very light dusting on the lid. Not too much, we just want a veil off a product. So the idea of a halo is that we want to do darker in the inside corner here, outside corner here, and then fading into light. And so this is my technique of doing it. Oh, and the brush. <laughs> this is the MAC 233. Just so you guys know, I do have some brushes that are like decades old so um if they don't exist anymore i'm really sorry i'm also going to be using the viseart grande pro palettes grand grand pro palettes um all three of them kind of mixed together so i'll link those below as well for you so let's do a neutral halo eye because i'm trying to stay away from purple because i always do purple but then also you can incorporate that into real life as well so you just want to look extra fancy at work one day you can do this with more muted tones and more natural colors or you can even do it with like bronzer and eyeshadow it's up to you let's start with our shade that's going to go through the socket so we'll go quite neutral i'm a mess today just so you know i forgot what hand i was using I forgot if I was left-handed or right-handed. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this. Usually I aim to go right into the socket like this, but I am kind of angling the brush slightly at an angle and taking that product higher than I would usually right into the inside here. And I'm keeping my eyes open for this. And my mirror's here and I'm looking up and down into my mirror. So that way I can see what it's gonna look like when I have my eyes open. I'm gonna take my Morphe M504, which is this big fluffy brush with no product on. And I'm just gonna go around the edges here and just start to buff that out with circular motions. I've filmed so many videos over the past few days that I've kind of gone really wrong and I'm not going to be using the content. And every time I finish a video, I get really annoyed and I just leave everything. I walked into like my filming room this morning and it's just used brushes everywhere and it looks like I had a tantrum and just walked away, which I did. So I have very limited brushes, but I mean, they work. So, so I'm going to use the MAC 213 because it's a flat brush and I'm just going to build up the same colour. So here's how I measure a halo eye. The colored part of the eye, iris, is that it? That's gonna be where we're gonna highlight. So I only take my color as far in that. So I'm looking straight forward and I'm patting the color just up to there. Same with the inside corner. So all we've done is gone through the socket and we've literally packed color on like this. Nothing special, no crazy blending. So far so good, easy, right? And you know what? Put a little bit of a lighter eyeshadow in the middle here, whack on some mascara and you have like a nice look. So let's go something in to kind of add a little bit more warmth to that. So I'm gonna go in with like a ready brown. Please don't turn purple, please don't turn purple. And I'm actually gonna do that through the socket, but tighter in the socket. So I have a smaller brush. This is the Mac. Oh no, it's so old, the writing's gone. 211, 217, 217. Oh, it's a 217. <laughs> But this is actually really old because it's, um, I've had it for so many years, loads of hairs have fallen out. Um, so it's a little bit more precise than the usual 217s. But I'm using that, I'm literally going, can you see, pushing into my socket. And I have my brush more, more at a straightforward angle because that's going to give us a solid line. And I'm only putting that in the socket for now. 
And then what I'm gonna do with that color is I'm gonna put it where we did before, but I'm gonna do it further out. I'm not gonna take it as far across. So I'm gonna use it on the outside corner. But can you see I'm not taking it as far in as we do with that a darker brown? And same again here. You can use a smaller brush to get on that inside corner. Then I'm taking my big Morphe brush again, and then I'm just gonna soften that whole thing up. I feel like this Morphe brush is amazing to, you can literally draw product on your face and then blend it out with this one. With a spotlight or halo, we're not gonna blend out in this direction. We don't really want to cat eye it. You can, but I think it looks nicer when everything is a bit more consistent. So when you're blending out this way, try and blend under the eye more rather than out like that. We'll get to under the eye later. All right, so let's go in with something really dark. So let's get a very, very precise brush. So I'm gonna go in with a brush from my Kitco. And this is called what? It's a 1.13 and it's my detailing smudge. This is a really good brush. I featured this in my like, um my must have brushes and it's an amazing, amazing brush. So let's go in with, oh, there's a dark purple right there, but I'm not going to. Let's go in with a black. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be very, very careful and I'm only going on the lid. I'm not going any further up than the socket. And I'm gonna place that on the inside corner, but every time I'm doing a color on the lid, it's in stages. So we had the browns here, then our second color, then our darker. So the colors are in blocks, if that makes sense. Now it's up to you if you want to do this bit. I am, but you absolutely don't have to. Just before we blend that all together, I'm gonna to go in with the same brush and the black, and I'm gonna pop that right through the socket, almost like a line but I'm gonna be very, very careful. I'm gonna use my little finger right here as a pivot. So I have a steady hand. Then I'm gonna take a very small, again, really precise blending brush. This is another MAC 217, but it's not how it would be if you bought it. This is about 12 years old and all the hairs have fallen out so it's become very thin. So I'm gonna come right in and I'm gonna really soften it up, just blending right on top of where I applied that color. Very gently. Notice how my hand is right up the end here. It's not down this part of a brush because we don't want a harsh um, blend. We want a really light blend. So hold it up here for less pressure. And then where we put that color on the inside corners here, I'm just gonna pat gently on top. And this is gonna give us a really gentle blend without us having to go crazy wiping backwards and forwards. So ideally what we want to see is that gradient of black fading into that warmer kind of brown and then fading into that colder brown that we used before. Now I personally would like to see a little bit more of that warmer tone. Um, the color we did just before black, so I'm just gonna pat that on here and here. Our big Morphe brush. I'm just gonna buff that gently through the socket here. Again, holding it right at the end so we don't get any harsh lines. Cute. Okay, let's brighten the middle. There's two ways you can do this. We can go in with um, a primer and then lighten the middle. And people do that whole trick where they look down and up. I personally don't like that because <laughs> you don't really have control of where it lands. Um, or you can literally pat a, a light color in the middle. We're gonna do both. I wouldn't usually put like a primer on top of eyeshadow, but it's just to show you guys. So I'm gonna take a color that has some shimmer. And then all I'm gonna do is tap right in the middle. And then with a clean blending brush, I'm just going to gently tap the edges. Try not to disturb that shine. And that's how you can do a softer halo. Let's make it a little bit more dramatic. I'm going to take an eyeshadow primer. This is a perfect prime from Be Perfect Cosmetics. And I'm using this one because it's a little bit more liquidy. Um, you can also use Makeup Revolution Cut Crease Canvas, which is an amazing, amazing one. I'm not using it now because it's over there and I can't be bothered to stand up. And this is a nice primer anyway, so might as well. So I'm going to use a very thin concealer brush. This is the MAC 195. And if you do cut creases, I would 100% recommend getting this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look straight forward 
And then say you have like a more of a, um, a fold on your eye there, I'm actually just going to draw a tiny little bit. And we're going to work with that shape. So here's the shape we're going to make. I always describe it as like a tornado. <laughs> so bigger on top and then down a triangle. Yeah. <laughs> and here's how we're going to do it. We're going to carve out that shape first. Because that's the shape we want to be a little bit more precise. Maybe take it a little bit more further out than the coloured part of your eye, but not, nothing crazy. Then I'm just going to tap down the middle. And then I'm going to gently make that triangle shape, that tornado shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then just fill in the gaps in the middle. So here's what we're going to do. It doesn't have to be a perfect shape. We're going to grab a clean brush, anything that's kind of flat, not too fluffy. And then on the edges, I'm just going to tap. And then just tap over the whole thing. I'm not wiping, try not to wipe because you've set down that shape that you want. Now we don't want to move it. Now we have that lighter middle. Oh, I should have used something like whiter so you could have seen it better. That's cameras for you. So I'm going to grab a clean, flat brush. Um, this is some NYX one I got free with some points or something. But I'm choosing it because it has a rounder tip and it's very thin. There's no number on this. 14. <laughs> so let's choose something quite light and quite shimmery. And then we're going to very delicately trace that line with the top. And then still trying to create that same shape, that tornado shape, we'll just do a line down the middle here. I'm going to go back in with that brush we used before to tap the edges. And I'm going to tap the edges of this so it blends. So can you see here where this black kind of just um, looks like it stops? I'm just going to very gently blend that backwards and forwards get more of a fade going on. Not too far, I'm not being aggressive. Then I still feel like that warmer brown isn't very um, obvious. So now I'm gonna tap it. You see this gap between the black and the light? I'm gonna tap a little bit of that warmer brown right here. That's better, right there. Go back in with our tapping brush. Oh, this is the, this is Beauty Bay's own um, brush and does it have a number? It just says, hey, shorty on it. And then I just kind of adjust if I want to make the um, shimmer lighter. Just keep looking, playing. Not too much though, because you don't want to lose any detail. Okay, so that's our top done. So that's a technique you can use with any colours. Stick to the same kind of colour story if you want to. Blues, you can do different tones of blues. Just have a light, medium, dark. Purple, same again. So here's what I'm going to do for under the eye. I'm going to take that warmer brown, not the first colour we used, the second one. And I'm going to use that just under the eye. And we have two options here. So option one is to just do this. I'm going to take some of that black and then just like we do with a halo, inside, outside corner. just like that. If you want to, this can look a little bit weird sometimes, it depends what you like. You can take some of that more shimmery colour and use that in the middle here. But make sure it's kind of in line. I'm then going to take a darker brown pencil and just line it inside. Just like that. So that is our halo eye. Whack on some lashes, do your brows, um, whatever. You can even do liner on the top, but I feel like if you flick it out, it kind of ruins the, the roundness of the halo. Um, so it's up to you. You can even, um, actually, let's do that. I'm just gonna take a small angle brush like this with our black, and I'm just gonna get right up to that lash line. I'm literally just pushing into the lash line. If you have quite sensitive eyes like me that blink every time anything goes near them, um, I always recommend I count to two in my head and then blink so I know when it's going to happen. I'm like, one, two, blink. One, two, blink. Because then you give yourself a chance to blink, <laughs> basically. So I hope that helped you. I hope it was very clear. Um, 
and precise. Do ask me questions below if you need more information. I also have a video that's really in depth, probably more in depth than this on how to do a cut crease, which I think will be amazing to follow if you like this kind of thing. I promise you, but by the end of that video, you'll be doing cut creases so easily. Yeah, I hope it helped and I hope you enjoyed that video. Please give it a big thumbs up if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Oh, follow me on Instagram, Twitter. I'm still trying to understand Twitter. I don't get it. Um, I don't know when people are talking at me or about me. Thank you so much again, guys, and I will see you very soon. Bye.